Okay, so what I'm going to show you to do here is I'm going to show you how to make a checkerboard text using GIMP. Uh, somebody on Yahoo Answers asked this, so I figured it would be easier for me to just do it and upload a video than it would be to type up everything involved in doing it. So the first thing you need to do is click File New, and we're going to make a small file of 25 pixels by 25 pixels, and click OK. What we're doing right now is we are creating the checkerboard pattern that our text will work off of. Um, so all you got to do now is figure out how to create your two uh, black boxes in each corner here and here. And that pattern will just be repeated throughout the entire uh, text. So to do that, I'm going to click Image, Guides, New Guide. Set it to Vertical and 50% and then click OK. Uh, what guides do, they're essentially reference lines or, you know, as the name suggests, guides that will help you uh, get the exact location of a specific spot on an image. You can also just drag up from the ruler here and just create guides as you see fit. They don't show up in your final image. They only show up uh, in, your, in your XCF GIMP file, but whenever you save it out as a JPEG or what have you, it will not show up. So now if you just click image, guides, new guide by percent, and set it to horizontal, and then click OK, it's going to set, it, set in a second guide uh, halfway through horizontally. So now we've essentially cut our square into four smaller squares where we're able to create our pattern. So now all you have to do is click on your rectangle select tool, and then just drag a box like so, and then click over here where it says add to current selection and what that'll do is now if I create another box it'll keep the original selection so now I have two boxes selected at one time so um, always keep this in mind this is something that, that's often overlooked and not discussed uh, these four modes will allow you to change your selection dynamically you can replace your current selection add to your current selection subtract from your selection or intersect between the two selections so experiment with those sometime. Uh, they're really useful and really helpful if you're trying to make some pretty neat selections. So now click on your bucket tool and fill your selection in with black. Make sure that whenever you fill it in, it's set to fill whole selection, not fill similar colors. And then click select, none. And then you can also click view, show guides, and that'll hide your guides for now so you can see what's going on. A shortcut key for that is control shift T. That will show and hide your guides. It's very useful whenever you're doing uh, website layouts and stuff like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a pattern out of this. Um, you could save it out as a pattern and then restart GIMP and do all of that. But for now, since I'm only planning on using this pattern one time, I'm going to just click Edit, uh, Select All, or I'm sorry, Select All, that's it. And then click Edit, Copy. Now that it's on our clipboard, you are able to use that as a pattern with GIMP. So we're going to go ahead and start making our text now. So we're going to click File New. And I made this 25 pixels square. So we're going to need to make this image, I would say, about 1,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. Somewhere in that range. Just so we have a, a much larger image to work with. So now just click on your text tool and start typing. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. Yeah. And then we fix our window so it works a little better. And we're going to move. Make sure you click on move the active layer whenever you're using the move tool. Otherwise, it'll move weird things that you're not wanting it to move. If you set it to move the active layer, it's only going to move whatever layer you're on, which is so much easier because now I don't have to be perfect and click on the text. I can just click out here in space and it knows to just move that layer. So now as you can see my text doesn't quite fit so I'm going to click image uh, canvas size or actually fit canvas to layers and that'll just make my uh, canvas a little bit bigger. As you can see though there's a little bit of transparent space back here and in order to fix that I'm just gonna right click on the background and click uh, layer to image size and that'll beef it up and fix that as well. So now what I have is my text 
and my background layer ready to go. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to duplicate the layer. The reason why I duplicated the text layer is because I want to preserve one of these layers if I ever need to make changes to the font later. Uh, what I, and the reason why is because we're going to essentially destroy the ability to edit this one. We're not going to be able to uh, edit the text here because I'm going to right click on it and click discard text information because you have to do that with GIMP. Now we're going to right click on it again and we're going to click uh, add layer mask. Or I'm sorry, no, no, no. We're going to click alpha to selection. Yeah, that makes more sense. I'm going to right click and create a new layer just hit OK. We're going to right click again and click add layer mask and set it to selection and click OK. And then we're going to hide this black layer here. And then click select none. So now what we have is a layer here that has a layer mask applied to it. Um, if you don't know much about layer masks, go ahead and check out a couple of the links I've posted uh, alongside of this video, some of the related posts, they'll help you out and they'll help explain to you how layer masks really work. Um, but essentially, uh, it creates a parallel image to the current image that's black and white, and all of the white pixels in the layer mask are visible, and all of the black part pixels in the layer mask are transparent. Again, check out the links below if that doesn't make sense, but you know you may see the effects just from watching this. So now I'm going to click on my new layer that I created with the layer mask on it and this by the way this is the layer mask and I'm going to click on my bucket tool and I'm going to click on the pattern fill you'll notice that there's a selection here called clipboard and that's that's our checkerboard pattern that we had in the other one now all we have to do is fill in the selection and uh, that's pretty much how you make how you can make a uh, checkerboard pattern using GIMP now, of course, it doesn't look that nice because of the weird white background, but if you may, if you uh, hid the background layer and then save this out as a PNG, all you're going to get is the transparent text. And let me show you what I mean. I'll just do it now. Click File, Save As, and we'll save this to my desktop for now. Uh, let's see. Get it. Name it, I don't know, checkerboard text maybe. But here's the key, you need to save it as .png, and then click save. Uh, that's okay, just click export. And usually all the default settings seem to work just fine for me too, so just go ahead and click save. Let me bring up my desktop. Um, show, some, show my desktop icons. It's hiding around in here somewhere. Um, There it is. That's photo viewer. Okay, and as you can see, there's some transparency on that image. So I hope this helps. Um, if you need any more help, don't hesitate to ask me. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Over on the right, you can see you can get a free ebook uh, for subscribing to my tutorials. Uh, the big advantage of that is I open a, it's an open line of communication between you and me. I'm able to just, you know, I occasionally will email you and ask you how you're doing with GIMP and you can email me back and ask me questions, what have you. So uh, it's definitely the best way to get in contact with me, so I highly recommend that you subscribe to that over to the right. Thanks.